The Lagos State government, in agreement with religious leaders, has banned all religious congregational service involving over 50 worshippers. This was part of the communique read by the Commissioner for Home Affairs, Prince Anofio Elegushi, after a meeting with religious leaders in the state at the Bagauda Kalto Press Center, Alausa, on Wednesday. Present at the meeting and briefing were the Lagos Chairman of Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan Alexander Bangbola, and Grand Chief Imam of Lagos State and other regional religious leaders from all over the state. Joining us live from London is a British Nigeria citizen, Nims Obunge, who was running as an independent candidate for the London mayoral election. Thank you for joining us, Mayor. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a privilege to be with you. Now, can you tell us what the situation is like currently in the UK with the outbreak and spread of the coronavirus, COVID-19? Well, obviously, um, at this moment in time, whilst there's a lot of fear among the main within the community, some of us are calling for calmness. We understand that the British government has given directives that people should avoid social gatherings, and that includes meeting in pubs, in theaters, and it's extending itself even to faith organizations to ensure that one is kept safe. Um, our schools are going to be shutting down from Friday. Um, in Sky News, there have been um, insinuations that the military may be brought onto our streets. But the government sources I have have indicated to the contrary. So we'll wait to see what happens there. European countries are the most affected only after China, the, the epicenter of the epidemic. Now, one would have thought with its occurrence in China, other European countries would have had better precautionary and preventive measures in place to curtail its spread less than it is right now. Did they sleep on this? Well, I, I would say that Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, is being very careful as to how he determines the actual responses. He feels that he does not want a chaotic situation where we have the nation on lockdown. Uh, and so there's been a gradual framing of how he's intervening both publicly and how we engage with this process, um, dealing with, I suppose, other in terms of the international community. I think he's looking at Europe. He's looking at what happened in China. But from our understanding, with scientific evidence, what they have said is it would be good news if only 20,000 people died in the UK. My understanding of the projection have said about 250,000 people could die. So I suppose right now the, the Prime Minister is being careful to minimize the numbers. All right, now we're having a situation of some Nigerians and British Nigerians returning back into the country. What is the position of the UK government on this? I think the British government has been quite clear in relation to um, the importance of foreign travel. They have said that we should minimize international travel wherever we are at this stage. And um, I think over the next few weeks and months, one is going to need to keep a watch in brief. But with the immediacy of the situation, I know that people are still traveling in. Um, I know that there's going to be a, a, a significant lockdown. And I understand even in Nigeria, there are, should we say, travel restrictions, even from Britain. Interesting, you did mention, I mean, significant lockdown, because presently at home here in Nigeria, th there is restriction on gatherings above 50 persons in all social and religious circles. Is this the same in the UK? Well, to, to, to this extent, there has not been an official ban. But the Prime Minister has advised that people should not um, gather in, should have mass gatherings. 
Now, there was a, some, some argue, and I, w- I wouldn't say this um, as a fact, but some argue that by saying it's a government bus, insurance companies are not duty-bound to pay for the loss of income that you would find with those in the hospitality industry, airline industry, and the like. So by simply saying we advise this, it is not imposing a change within that um, industry. Okay. So those within the hospital cannot demand All right. just, um, for compensation. All right, just before I let you go, now we're, we're pretty much aware that your mayoral election against the incumbent, Mayor Sadiq Khan of the Labour Party and others, which was scheduled for May 27, 2020, has been postponed. Can you give us the reason why and confirm a new date? Well, here's what's happening. We intended to go to the polls on the 7th of May. But with the coronavirus, it's become necessary um, to delay it because that would have impacted on all of our um, going out on the streets and campaigning and the potentials of affecting one another. So it's been delayed for one year. For one year. Absolutely. That, it, uh, we, it, which was a bit of a surprise to myself and my team. Yeah. Um, some of us have expanded financially and um, have put our teams on the streets, and we've done quite a bit. But now we hear it's one year. We've got to regroup and re strategize and make sure we win the elections. All right. When they come. All right. Names of Bungwe, I want to thank you for joining us this afternoon on News on the Hour. And all the best as you go forward in, in your campaign and elections. Thank you ever so much.